In this video, we are going to learn how to send an email from an SP.NET Core application using Gmail. This is great because it is an easy and free manner of sending emails. This allows you to practice and also build a portfolio in which you have an application that actually sends emails. If you want to learn more about building web APIs, buy my Udemy courses today. I have one that is about minimal APIs with Entity Framework Core and another one that is building minimal APIs with Dapper and in that we use store procedures. Link with a discount to these courses in the description of this video. Alright, so let's go to the tutorial. Alright, so we're going to create a new application, create a new project. This is going to work with Blazor, MVC, Web APIs, but just as an example, we're simply going to use a Web API. So Web API here, next, send emails example, next, we're going to be using .NET 8 and controllers, but this will work also with minimal APIs. So create. All right, so here we are. We're going to create a new service that is going to encapsulate the functionality of sending emails. So let me right click on here, add a new folder. I'll call it services. And in here I will create a new class. So add class, I'll call it email service, enter. And I'm going to inject a dependency so i will use a constructor here let me say i configuration configuration control dot create an assign field configuration and then let me say here public async task send email and i will say here a string receptor a string subject and also a string body all right so now i need to put here the email that is going to send the message so let me say here configuration we're going to have that in a configuration provider so let me say here get value a string email configuration colon email semicolon here and now let me copy this three times because here we are going to have the password we need a password which in our case is going to be a special password after that we need the host so let me say here host and host here and finally the port port in lowercase this is going to be an integer and we're going to say here port all right so now let me say here smtp client equal to new smtp client and we're going to pass here the host and the port semicolon smtp client dot enable ssl equal to true of course we need a security connection a secure connection smtp use default credentials false because we want to send custom credentials so let me say here smtp client credentials equal to new network credentials and let me pass here the email and the password all right now let me build a message bar message equal to new mail message and let me pass here the from email or just email in our case the receptor or the to email like they say here from and to it is the same the subject which we receive as a parameter and the body and finally await smtp client dot send mail async and let me pass the message as a parameter and that's it with this now i can create here a new interface so that we always apply the dependency inversion principle in which we depend on abstractions and not on concrete types so let me say here add to current file just to keep things simple to have this here now let me configure the service so let me come to the program class and let's come here and let me say builder services at transient i email service email service all right this is great now let me create a new controller that is going to allow us to send emails so we can call it emails controller we're going to inherit from controller base we're going to say here route api slash emails and also api controller now let me inject my i email service so i email service email service control dot assign as a field then here i will say http post public async task i action result send email and we're going to say here a string receptor a string subject and a string body we're keeping things simple because it's just an example for sending an email 
So let me say here, await email service, send email, and then let's pass the receptor, the subject, and the body. Should write subject correctly here. All right, semicolon here, and then return a simple OK. All right, so all that is left is to configure the host, the port, the email, and the password. So let's do that. And I mean by that, that we want to configure this information in a configuration provider. Now, we must realize something. It is different to configure a host and a port, which is public information usually. That is different than storing email and password. There is a special configuration for those two. Let's do first these two. For these two, we can simply use the app settings JSON or the app settings development JSON since, since we are in development. So let me come here and put this here. Let me come here. I want to come here. Let me copy this just to not make a silly mistake. And let me come here and let me say host. And for the host, we have to use the Gmail host, which in our case is the one we're going to use. So let me say SMTP gmail.com comma port 587. All right. So now this is great, but now we need to take into consideration that this is sensitive information and real email and a real password is sensitive information. And I don't want to put it here because I could upload this code to GitHub and then I would be revealing a real email and its real password, which is not good. Therefore, what we're going to do is that we're going to use another configuration provider called user secrets. The user secrets configuration provider allows us to have configuration data that is not going to be shared with other users, with other people. So let's come here and let me say manage user secrets. And in here, I can do the exact same that I did before. I can come here and I can copy this. Let me paste this here. This is a section and here I can put email and I will say my real email and then password. And here I will put a real password. Of course, I'm not going to show you what the email or the password is because it is real information, but it suffices for you to put that information here and here in your case. Now, in order to be able to send emails from a Gmail account using an application like Spironet Core, we have to do some special configurations in our Gmail account. So let's come to gmail.com. All right, so we're here in Gmail. So let's come here and let's click on the bottom that is around here. In your case, it may be in English or in your preferred language. So here we are. Let's come to security. And the first configuration that we must do is to enable two-factor authentication. In my case, it is already done. As you can see here, two steps verification. It says that it is active and that is great. We need that. That basically means that whenever you want to log in into your account, you are going to receive an SMS on your cell phone to verify that this is you. And the second thing that we must configure is an application password. An application password is basically a special password that is designed for a specific application and it is different than your main password. So for that, let's come here and let's write here. In your case, you will write application. In my case, I can write it in Spanish, but as you can see here, we have applications password. So let's come here. Let's click on here. I need to log in into my account. So I just did that. And here I can put the name of the application. In my case, I can just say YouTube example create. And here we have the password. I can copy that password and come back to my application. Let's come back here. And then I can put my real email in the user secrets and also the newly created password. So I will do that. I just did that, but I didn't do it in front of you. But what is important is that now I can press Ctrl F5 to run our application and we're going to see that we're going to be able to send an email from our SP.NET Core application. Let's see that. We are here in Swagger. Let me come here and let me say, for example, here I will put my email. A subject can be, this is a sample email for a video. And here I can put, send from my SP.NET Core app. All right, so execute and let's see that we have back a 200 OK. And if we come here, we're going to see that we have this is a sample email for a video sent from my SP.NET Core app, which means that this is indeed working. Excellent. If you want to learn more about building web APIs by my Udemy courses today, I have a course on minimal APIs with Entity Framework Core and another on building minimal APIs with Dapper. In that we use store procedures. Link with a discount to these courses in the description of this video. Thank you.